Welcome back everybody to video 8 on how to load software into your color computer on the CocoPi project. This is going to cover some of the built-in software that is available via the Tandy cartridge collection. I'm also going to show you how to add software from the Coco SDC ultimate image off the color computer archive. And then lastly, I will show you how to add your own custom software to the CocoPi through the network share. And I will cover both cartridge based loading of software and disk based loading of software, but there's plenty of more ways you can do things. You can do things through cassette files. You can do things over drive wire, lots of ways to get software into your cocoa, but we're going to focus on just getting some cartridges and some floppies loaded into a color computer too. And the sky is the limit and more things will be covered in more videos. So where do we begin? We always begin by bringing up our terminal window and then typing in menu. And because in a previous video, I already showed you how to download the ROM files, which should already be here. I'm going to show you how to very quickly load a ROM cartridge into a color computer too. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my Coco 2 menu. And by the way, when we say Coco 2, the one is silent, right? Because Coco 2 and Coco 1, basically the same machine, just in a different box. So in your Coco 2 menu, I'm going to bring up just a standard Coco 2 with disk extended color basic. I'm going to hit enter and here's my Coco. Now, what you need to know how to do, and this is a MAME thing. This is not a Coco Pie thing. This is just a MAME thing. So this is some basic MAME knowledge, MAME 101. How do I do anything in MAME? How do I get software in MAME? Well, MAME has a menu key by default, which is the tab key. When you press the tab key, this brings up the built-in user interface from MAME. How do I load software from MAME? How do I get files into my computer, uh, into my Coco? Well, ironically enough, that would be through the file menu, which by the way, the file manager, you can also use your mouse. So I will bring up file manager and now it's going to ask me, well, how do I want to load? Do I want to load things from a cassette tape, from a cartridge? Do I want to stick in a virtual hard drive or two? Do I want to load something from a floppy disk? So in this case here, to keep it simple, we're going to choose cartridge. And now it's going to say, well, what cartridge do you want to run? I want to point to your attention right here, this thing here that says software list. This is already built in and you don't have to browse very far. So if you want to take a, a gander at any of the Tandy Radio Shack retail cartridge library and you just pull up the software list and then here's your option here. We have Tandy cartridges and there's a handful of Dragon cartridges. So we'll get to that in a future video. But let's just go ahead and pull up Tandy cartridges and then boom, look at this. These are all of the various Tandy cartridges that have been available through time and are available on Internet Archives in one place or another. So one of the probably single greatest cartridge games for the color computer that everybody probably wants to see here would be Dungeons of Daggerass. So if I highlight that and just just hit enter it's going to boot up a coco and it's going to boot up that cartridge and ladies and gentlemen what we're looking at here is dungeons of daggerath in the color computer how hard was that not very hard and that's the whole idea behind the coco pie how easy is it to boot up a coco well i'm going to do it again nothing up my sleeve when i close that okay Color Computer 2, Disk Extended Color Basic from the Color Computer from the Color Computer 2 menu. Hit Enter. This is going to fire up my Coco 2. How do I get to my user interface or my menu within MAME? I hit the Tab key. I go down to where it says File Manager. I hit Enter. I'm going to say, Hey, I want to run a cartridge. I'm going to hit Enter, and then I'm going to choose the second option from the top, Software List. I will choose the first option, Tandy Color Computer Cartridges, and then there is a spit ton of cartridges here, including, who could forget, America's Pastime, Color Baseball. And we can go ahead and boot up that cartridge, and then here we have it, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Color Baseball. So real easy, if you just want to fire up your Cocoa Pie and fire up a Cocoa and boot up any of the available Tandy ROM cartridges, that is all built in to the menus. You don't have to do anything else to enjoy using your Cocoa Pie right away. Are you excited? Is this enough? Well, guess what? Just wait, there's more. How can we add even more software to our CocoPi repository? Again, everything here is meant to be menu-driven, meant to be 
user friendly. So let's go down here to our utilities menu. If you if I went too fast, we were still here in the color computer menu. I scrolled down to the end. I chose option 11, return to main menu. Now I'm going to go to from the main menu, option 9, utilities menu. And now this is where we're going to go to the Cocoa Pie downloads menu. And there are lots of different repositories. I'm going to focus on one for this video. In this case here, I'm going to choose option number five, download the latest ultimate SDC image. Now this does not emulate the Coco SDC. This does not emulate the SDC Explorer, but it is all of the files and folders organized that a lot of people get from the archive to run on their real Coco SDC on their real Cocos. And it's a great way just to get a spit ton of software on your Coco Pie um, by just pressing a single button. Notice too that we have Fusix, which is a Unix-like operating system System. the latest edition of Nitrous 9 ease of use image is able to be done um, the AGD arcade game uh, development or arcade game designer there's over 200 games there that have been ported by Parasurat and Jim Gary's MC10 uh, library which is constantly updated these are all different repositories you can download I know I'm speaking quickly those the word was repository and then what does this do this one and this is kind of big so when I hit enter to download uh, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to download it, I think, as a zip file. And um, once it's done downloading that zip file, it actually has to extract the zip file. Now, while it's doing that, I'll show you um, a quick before and after. I don't know if you remembered in a previous video, but when I showed you what was in my Pi 4, and I went to my Share 1, and I went to this... SDC folder. There was only a few files, but now it's actually extracting this zip file here, the Coco SDC images. So now we can see behind the scenes on the Pi, it's extracting a whole bunch of stuff. And the more I keep refreshing this, you're going to see we got apps, we've got collections, we've got communications, demos, education, games. Tim Linder. So this is now downloading and extracting um, the entire archive that you can get from the color computer archive and there's a ton of stuff here so you can see that it's taking a little bit of time to download it and extract it but once again how tech savvy did I have to be to do this not very I just had to pull it up from a menu again I'm really selling and trying to drive home and probably annoying you at this point in time on how easy and how user friendly doing things from the Cocoa Pie is. So now when I hit, now that it's done and I press enter to continue, uh, I've now finished loading software. I'm going to return to the main menu. And now uh, back in the main menu, I'm going to go back to my Color Computer 2 menu. And again, I'm just going to pull up the stock Color Computer 2 with Disk Extended Color Basic. And I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to bring up that Cocoa. And my current situation prevents me from making this full screen, which would be a heck of a lot easier for us to look at in this video. So I'm going to have to manually resize this video. All right, here we are. Here's my color computer too. How do I pull up the MAME menu? Because now this is running MAME. This window here is MAME. How do I pull up a menu in MAME? I press the tab key. And how do I load a file? Well, I'm going to go to file manager. And here we go. I'm going to hit enter. Now we did a cartridge. Now we want to do a floppy. We're going to hit floppy one. And as soon as I hit floppy one, it's going to ask us, well, where do you want to go? And then the SDC menu is where uh, everything is that I just extracted. And now I've got a bunch of different folders. Um, the ones that we probably want to look at that I would be interested in anyways would be games. But obviously there's music, there's Nitrous 9, there's programs, there's ROMs, there's the Sierra stuff, there's utility stuff, there's collections, there's apps. So, but we'll go to games. And then this should all be alphabetical, and I can't even think of a particular game right now. Actually, I can. We'll go to D, and we're going to pull up Donkey King, one of the greatest um, games for the Color Computer 2 with 32K. Um, DK, I'm not sure which one is which, but Donkey. Okay, so here's our Donkey disc. And when you go to open a disk, it's going to ask you, do you want to do read only or do you want to do read write? Um, depending on the version of Donkey King, I think later versions actually allowed you to save high scores. So I'll do read write. Now, now it's loaded the disk. 
I can now just get out of this menu and I'm just going to hit tab to get out. Now this is where the Cocoa Pie differs from something like the um, Retro Pie. Retro Pie is designed to be real easy to just highlight the game you want to play, press the fire button on your joystick, and then boom, it launches that game. The Cocoa Pie is emulating a Cocoa. On a real Cocoa, we have to put a floppy disk in the floppy drive, which I just did through the menu, and then we have to type in dir, which is to pull up a directory of what's on that thing. And then we would then have to, depending on if it was a bin file or a bass file, we would have to type in load if it was a bass file or load m if it was a um, machine language binary file. So in this case here, I would type in load m donkey. And this is the same way it works on a real Cocoa. And once it's loaded, then you would execute it. and you would type in EXEC to execute. Now, we got real lucky the screen came up orange. If you owned a Coco back in the day, you know, you, depending on how it turned on and how it booted, the, the reds might be blue and blues might be reds or vice versa. In this case here, it actually came up as the right color. But I'll show you one more thing um, that you can only do in an emulator. If I bring up my um, uh, tab menu, my UI menu, it still remembered that I was in the uh, file manager. So I need to go back one step. And now there is a menu here that says machine configuration. And this is how I can tweak things here. And if the red and blue were uh, uh, opposite, I can go to artifacting and say standard or reverse, or I can actually turn it off and run it as RGB monochrome. So this is how you can um, tweak red and blue colors on your Coco. In this case here, this is what we need. So we need the red color and I'm just going to hit enter and then boom, here we go. This is Donkey King. Where did Donkey King come from? It came from the Color Computer Archive when I downloaded that Ultimate SDC image and, um, and I loaded it. I loaded it through the menu. I'm not going to sit here and play the game, but as we can see here, um, the game is playing. So what I just showed you is how to download software into your Cocoa Pie, and then I just showed you how to load software um, into the Cocoa once it's running MAME. And by the way, you heard a little bit of scratching sounds in there, and that's only because I'm trying to run this in a window, and I think that's messing with things. Um, if I had hit Alt Enter to run it full screen, I think the sound would have been cleaner. But let me do one more thing for you here, boys and girls. I am going to, once again, I'm going to show you how I can load software um, into the uh, Pi. So if I go to that share, I go to my Pi 4 share, and I go to share one, and then I go to, for example, here, SDC, which is where things is. If I go to SDC here, um, that's the whole file of all the things, but I'm going to drag and drop a file over here right now. I'm going to drag over Joust, and this is a brand new game that was just released for the Color Computer 3. This is the actual Joust arcade game, and I just drag that disk to the SDC folder on my Cocoa Pie through my home network. What does that allow me to do? Well, now that allows me to, number one, I have to leave my Cocoa 2 menu, and now I'm going to go down to my Cocoa 3 menu, and I'm just going to choose a, um, a Cocoa 3 with Disk Extender Color Basic. I believe this defaults to 512K. And so now when I do that, and I hit Enter, I have my Cocoa 3 here. And now, once again, I'm going to make the screen a little bigger so we can see it a little better. And um, here's my Cocoa 3. How do I get to my menu in MAME? I hit the Tab key. I'm going to go to my file manager and I'm going to say that I want to load a floppy disk. So I'm going to highlight floppy one. I'm going to go into SDC and at the bottom of SDC somewhere, or here it is, here's my joust disk. I'm going to hit that and in this case here I definitely want to hit read write because um, joust will allow you to save your scores. So I'm going to hit read write. Now joust is open. Now I want to do one more thing. I want to return to the previous menu and again I want to go up to my machine configuration and I want to tell MAME to be RGB. Actually it's defaulted to RGB. So the monitor type right now is RGB. So that's what MAME is, def is, def is defaulting to. I'm just going to hit tab and get out of here. So now when I type in dir I should see the joust disk 
that's in here. And as I showed in my earlier video, um, you can run a config file to tell it what you have. But for the case of doing this, just to show it off, I'm just going to type in run joust. In this case here, it's a basic program that loads everything in. So I'm just going to run joust. And then what should ultimately happen is it should boot up the game and the game should start running in its attract mode. And that should be good enough. And what we'll see here now is that joust did run and Joust did um, boot up and it's running. So I'm now running the latest uh, addition to the Color Computer 3 games library. This is Glenn Hewlett's transcode of the actual Joust arcade game to run on a 512K Coco 3. Don't have a real Coco 3? Guess what? You can play a Coco 3 on your Coco Pie and do a reasonably good job of doing that. Now I had to um, make the window smaller because trying to make this thing full screen was definitely generating a lot of uh, staticky noise and, and that's something that will be addressed when I have a better way to record. Um, but this is the game. Now there's one other thing that you're going to hear right now too that's real minor, but you still hear the floppy noise. And that's because MAME is emulating real hardware so well. This was a problem with real hardware where when you ran the basic program to load everything, it never um, stopped moving the drive motor. So Glenn actually released a 1.1 patch to this to fix that drive motor sound. So because I'm running this on MAME, which is emulating a real floppy drive, you can still hear the drive spinning <laughs> in the background while the game is running. But I have shown you several things now. How to boot up a color computer in the Cocoa Pie from the menu. That is the proper way to do it. I've showed you how to load a cartridge on a Cocoa 2. I've shown you how to load a floppy on a Cocoa 2. I've shown you how to copy your own software to your Cocoa Pie's media folder through the network share and then I showed you how to um, load that software on a Color Computer 3 by adding user contributed software to your Cocoa Pie and booting that up. So hopefully at this point now you have plenty of tools and knowledge to go forth and Cocoa using your Cocoa Pie. There will be more videos to come. We will have a video just on Nitrous 9. We'll have a video just on the MC10 part of this. We'll have a video on how to use Pi drive wire on both the emulated machines and on real machines. So there'll be more specific videos and hopefully digestible chunks to cover specific topics. And as you are learning to use the Cocoa Pie and as you're using the Cocoa Pie, if you have questions, if you have suggestions, send them to us. The best way to do that is on the Coco Discord server, but we will also try to monitor the Facebook Coco Pie group as uh, as often as possible. But hopefully this was helpful and hopefully at this point in time now nobody's got an excuse to not try to run a Coco on the Coco Pie and get some software up and going. Lots more to cover, but this is a great place to start. See you on the next video. This is Stevie Stroh saying Coco Pie forever.